I'm sure you all remember this opening scene, filmed almost one year ago when I moved into this apartment alone. No husband yet, just me and Ollie. It's incredible how much can happen in just a year. We're now a few weeks away from moving into a fixer upper together. So, as one last hurrah, I thought it would be interesting to give you a recap of what my apartment looked like before I decorated, after decorating, and what it looks like now. This was my funny little mock up of what I wanted my bedroom to look like very simple, cozy, and minimalistic. This was what it looked like after the makeover. It's almost exactly like what I envisioned. And this is what it looks like now. Pretty much the same, except for the duvet cover and throw pillow. Although I've always loved experimenting with different design styles, I'm glad I went with a minimalist look because I apparently never got tired of it. I can restyle most of these pieces in my new home as well, just because they're so versatile. I think the biggest change in my bedroom might be the growth of my Magnolia Champaka, which makes me so happy to say, because if the biggest change of anything has been growth, then that's a beautiful thing to have witnessed. On the other side of my bedroom, I originally wanted a drawer, a round mirror, and a clothing rack. This was what it looked like after decorating. And this is what it looks like now. I would have loved to keep the same look, but unfortunately, the round mirror fell and knocked over the vase on its way down. It was quite the spectacle. Now, let's head over to the bathroom. I wanted to keep the bathroom relatively simple, with just a low shelf and a painting overhead. Our friends, John and Ginny, helped us put together the low shelf, and I painted the abstract painting myself. I made sure to keep the bathroom minimal and tidy, so it creates a relaxing environment for us. If you think about it, the bathroom is the first place you head to in the morning and the last place you visit before you sleep, so it should make you feel good. This is what the bathroom looks like now. It's mostly the same, except a little more lived in. Fun fact, this dried grass was actually saved from my wedding decor. Next, we have the TV wall. There wasn't much that I wanted to do with this wall since I didn't like to watch TV before I married John. Little did I know, we would now spend most of our free time watching TV together after dinner. We're currently watching a Korean drama called Rookie Historian on Netflix. This is what the TV wall looks like now. I've only updated the arrangement and added a plant and a wedding photo. Simple and clutter free. The sofa corner was also very straightforward. I just wanted a sectional, a coffee table, a rug, and a statement piece. This was what it looked like after decorating. The only extraneous decor piece that I splurged on was this giant mirror, but it also serves a functional purpose and makes the room feel a lot bigger. This is what the sofa corner looks like now. Since we are getting a little older, we added a few more essentials, like this neck massager. <laughs> it's a game changer. I'll link it below for you guys. I also found this dog bone basket on Amazon for Ollie's toys, and it makes our house feel so much more organized. Great investment. I'll link most of everything you'll see in this video in my description box. Another favorite purchase of ours has been these lap desks. We eat on them and use our laptops on them almost every day. You can also store books and other things in the lap desk as well. Super handy, looks great, and is a must if you like to eat while watching TV on your couch. Back when I was making over this space, John and Ginny came over to help me build all the furniture pieces. And I'm glad to say that not only did our apartment remain unchanged for the most part, so did our close-knit friendships. Looking back at this past year, I didn't realize that I'd almost made a subconscious resolve to pick quality over quantity. Yes, it's true that my apartment is far from the other minimalist homes that you've seen online. I mean, just look at my shoes hanging out there in the open. 
it's clear that I'm not into extreme minimalism. But this is truly minimal for me. I used to be a maximalist in every sense of the word. I loved things and I loved decor and changing up my home design every other week. Part of me still does. But after a while, it became less about my love for decor and more about putting out the next viral photo on Instagram. So I lost my creative passion trying to chase after the algorithm. With this apartment, I wanted to exercise restraint by going all neutral and choosing quality over quantity. If I didn't absolutely love the piece of decor, I didn't buy it. And the few things that I did outgrow, I made sure to find a good home for it so it could be restyled by someone else. As a result, my life became simpler, my mind became lighter, and I actually felt like this was my cozy home instead of a stage for my social media projects. A great example of this is my little Anne cave as opposed to man cave. <laughs> my art studio served as my sanctuary throughout my stay here. It's where I was able to work with my hands, express myself, have my quiet time with the Lord, care for plants, and do all the creative projects I've ever wanted to do. Here's a sneak peek of some of the ceramic vessels I made for the Huga Shop's second collection. They're all imperfectly beautiful in their own unique ways. I can't wait to share them with you when I put them on the shop later this year. Here we have my little collection of succulents called the Don't Mess With Me Gang. I didn't do any organizing prior to filming this art studio, so you could see what it looks like on a normal workday. Messy, colorful, and creative, just the way I wanted it. On the other wall, I envisioned a bookshelf and a work desk. This was what it looked like after the makeover. I know that the stickers beneath the shelves drive everyone insane, but they're not very easy to take off, so it is what it is. I accumulated more books while living here, so the shelf looks fuller, but I eventually want an entire wall of books in my future living room. There's just something so magical about being in a room full of books, don't you think? But who knows if we can actually afford to build this? We'll just have to see. My desk almost always looks like this nowadays. Having my journal, planner, and Bible nearby makes me feel ready to tackle on anything. Can anyone else relate? And of course, this bread loaf is always lying underneath my desk during all hours of the workday as well. He's the best coworker, but between you and me, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> Next is the guest bathroom. I originally wanted to install a simple shelf right here, but instead, I decided to repurpose this plank of wood. This restroom is kept purposefully plain, with the only interesting thing being this magazine holder. John likes to read instead of using his phone when he's in here, so this was a great solution for him. When I moved in, a must-have for me was a dining table because it symbolized family and community. I envisioned having my kids, small group members, and my family eat here together. But since we're moving and in the middle of a pandemic, none of that will happen anytime soon. It's alright though, everything will fall into place in its own time. This is what the dining table looked like when I decorated it for my home wedding last August. Being able to get married at home was a blessing in itself, so I have absolutely no regrets. This is what the dining space looks like now. Everything is the same, except we got new lighting and we stored an air fryer in the back. Woohoo! <laughs> Finally, let's have a look at the wraparound balcony when I first moved in. It was absolute chaos and filled to the brim with things. As expected. But regardless, I was inspired to turn it into a sanctuary. And that I did. Mm -hmm. 
This was what it looked like after the plant had grown. It's still one of my favorite looks so far. The balcony went through the most changes out of all the spaces in the apartment. Remember when it was transformed into a wedding aisle in the summer? I kept the same rug and used it for my fall makeover look. So cozy. This is what the balcony looks like now. Overgrown with herbs, veggies, and sunflowers. Can you believe that I grew those from seed? They're getting taller than my 7-foot wedding arch now. Hopefully we'll get to see some sunflowers before we move. Well, a lot of you have been following me since the very beginning. So you've been right here for some of the biggest milestones of my life. I'm grateful to have this platform where I can gently share the Word of God, my peaceful hobbies, and a bit of my personal life with you. Even though the environment will change pretty soon, just know that my mission on this platform will always stay the same. You can come back anytime for a refreshing word of encouragement. I'll do my best to minister to you in this way. To those who are new to my channel, welcome! Feel free to join our little community by hitting subscribe and the like button if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.